how's it going? Uh, I'm going to show you how to data log a car. For this one, I'm going to be data logging my Mustang. So um, I'm going to be using SCT. So the SCT handheld. And then this is the laptop I use here. Um, it is an XP laptop. Um, it was pretty powerful back in the day, but now it's a little outdated. But the reason why I use this laptop is because it has XP on it. And Windows XP um, works best with the... SCT Live Link Gen 2. Um, here's the device updater. So this is what you use if somebody emails you a new tune. Um, you would go into here and then you would hook up the USB port to your handheld. So USB here um, into from the computer to the device and then um, that would automatically turn the device on and then it's pretty straightforward. It gives you step by step for putting the tune in. You do have to find the file on your computer, so put it somewhere where you can find it easily, like your desktop. Or I just created a tunes file, and then make sure you name them appropriately. But anyways, I also tune, um, or I also data log uh, my air to fuel ratio, and I use this uh, NGK. This is the AFX. Um, it's pretty accurate. A lot of like. Um, LS guys, super guys use it. I know stuff like the, I think it's Innovate, uh, I believe. Those are a little more popular, but these ones are, they work really well. Um, and it's easy to build the Firewire cable for, and I'll show you that here in just a second. Okay, so this is the um, page, web page that I used, uh, the write up I used to build my data logging cable, um, which is called a Firewire cable. Um, there's a lot of useful information on this um, on this forum. This is Trick Tuners. This is Joe. This is the guy that tuned my Mustang um, whenever I had the Kenny Bell set up on it, and he did a really good job um, for the turbo setup. I did end up going with somebody else just because I wanted it on a dyno. But the reason I've done so much remote tuning or data logging is because I've done a lot of remote tuning where I need to data log the car and then send the information to the tuner so he can look over it and make changes. Um, so it's almost like street driving or street tuning a car. Um, this is very similar to that. It's just you do a little bit of the more work yourself. So anyways, Joe at Trick Tuner is really good. Um, and this goes through how to do that. So Trick Tuners slash data logging, um, pretty easy to find. but. If you just go to tricktuners.com, you can get most of this info real easy. So um, That is required to go from this device, uh, actually split into this harness, um, to the top of this. Uh, this is an analog port here on top, um, this port right here. And in the data logging software, which is here, um, there is a... Um, a column or a section where you can data log analog inputs. Um, you do have to do a little math and there's some stuff that goes in there but it's it's really not too hard and there's a few write-ups online to show you how to do all that but um, yeah it's actually not too bad. Um, this here is the port that goes obviously underneath the dash on the car and uh, alright so let's go out to the car and I'll show you how to data log it. Okay, so this is the Firewire cable here, and what this cable consists of is, um, or what it's for, is it splits into the NGK AFX or whatever wideband you have. Um, it splices into a couple of those wires, and then um, it, this, this is what plugs into the top of the SCT analog port on top. Um, so I got this at... Best Buy I believe and I think I had to buy a different type of cable and then get an adapter but um, whenever you start doing that stuff you really have to pay attention to the pins and how they work and what wires you're using and stuff like that but um, I ran my cable up underneath um, it's kind of hard to see maybe we'll put the seat forward you can see so mine runs right up underneath here and this is the center console here so it's usually hidden just underneath the um, front seat on the passenger side I just tuck it under there and then um, it's only there whenever I use it for uh, data logging
Okay, so I ended up putting my, um, this is my air to fuel. This is what I used to data log with. That's that uh, NGK AFX. And I ended up putting my harness and everything in here. I already had a hole cut. I know it's really hard to see because there's not very good light, but there's a hole cut um, right here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it was already there where somebody had put in something already. So I just reuse, reuse that existing hole. But, um, and then the harness runs down along underneath here, comes up um, inside around the shifter here, up through here underneath the dash and then out the firewall in the front through that grommet up there. Harness for the NGK FX. Um, I've kind of pulled it out here, that's why it's kind of messy looking, but um, it's this harness right here and it wraps down, it goes through the firewall down there. Um, anyways, it comes up, comes down through here, there's a ground there and then it goes directly to power right here off the fuse box. Obviously I don't have a battery right here, um, so I had to do power directly to there. But um, And then the rest of the harness goes right down here. As you can see, there's the continuation of that harness. It is right there. So that's where I ran my wideband. Looks like how close it is to my fan. I had to do some, get a little custom through there, but uh, it worked out really well. So anyways, that's how I have mine wired up. Obviously, before, this used to be a Kenny Bell car, so I had long tube headers that went back in the back there, over here, over here. And I ran the NGK AFX, the wideband. I ran it back over through here and down over here and then into um, the X pipe on this side over here. And you can run dual wide bands, you know, one for each bank, but um, my car that would be kind of tricky on. I'd have to run one right here and then another one over here um, and then, you know, some other stuff. But anyways, so that is how the wide band is installed in my car. Okay, so whenever you data log, one thing I do is I set the laptop on the seat because um, you're gonna have wires and cords and stuff everywhere. Um, this cord right here has to go into, this is my firewire cable that I showed you earlier. This one has to go into the SCT device. So I run the SCT device up here. I plug that in like that. And then I run my OBD port, OBD2 port underneath over there. That way I don't have too many wires crossing over here so I can still shift and that stuff. And then um, into the laptop, I use this cable here. So after I get all that hooked up, I will show you that again and uh, we'll go out and do a couple pulls, data log, and then I will show you the um, actual data and how to read that. Okay, so we're at the data logging spot and I just turned on the laptop. Um, I always do this kind of quick because I know my battery doesn't last too long on this. So um, just go in open up live link um, and then whenever it opens it's going to ask you um, what you want to do so it's opening up now and takes a minute so right here it says i want to data log a vehicle click on that and then it's going to give you step by step what to do uh, so it's saying plug in your usb port i just do it in the exact order that it says to do and then um, you can hear the device the SCT turn on and then it's going to tell you to put your port um, in your OS or USB not USB OBD2 port plugged in now and I think I'm going to switch this to one that I know is a little bit better okay and then it's going to go next. It's going to tell you to start the vehicle. And then we'll go next here. And then you have to check the communication between your vehicle and... I guess it would be the SCT and then to the laptop. Um, so it's going to check that communication now. Make sure that communication line's open. 
looks like it is you'll get uh, what the device is here and then once you get that you can go to vehicle info it's going to tell you uh, I have a configuration save so I go here do not validate PIDs because I'm going to use my own configuration that I've set up and we can go to load config no and then I think I've been using config 3 let's go to I'm just curious what config 4 is I'll make sure that has my analog which is here you can see the analog here and now we'll go out and do a little data log pull to start the log here this is all the stuff I'm uh, data logging down here below. So I'm gonna do analog one, which is my air to fuel, and the math is already set up for that to be correct, uh, based off stoichiometric, not um, lambda, lambda, lambda. Um, so there's my fuel pump duty cycle, uh, idle speed, duty cycle, injector pulse width, load. Uh, one thing you want to make sure you have, which makes it easier for me to tell when I go full throttle is not, is the, make sure I have it on here, throttle position sensor absolute. Um, so as you hit the throttle, that changes and that can help you find when you go full throttle in the data whenever you put it over into Excel. All right, so that's a lot of info but let's go do a data log and then I will show you the data. All right, so we're out here. Uh, I'm in fifth gear now, but I'm gonna go ahead and start the data log just so I can show you. I'm not gonna data log in fifth gear, but I will, uh, let's see, it should come up with that it started. And so now you can see the graph, just everything's on there right now. Uh, so the graph is gonna be really crazy looking but you can switch it to just do like uh, analog. And so that's where you would unclick those boxes there and then it would show on the graph. But I'm just gonna data log it all because I'm not really watching, but we'll go, uh, we'll do third gear because fourth gear is too fast. So uh, we'll bring it down to about 3000 RPMs and then we'll go full throttle from here. So full throttle. So this is going to be more bikers out here. They're everywhere out here. Um, but anyways, so this data log is actually useful for me. So I made sure and data log the info that I want to see. So that's what this log is, is for. Um, I'm not sending this to a tuner or anything. I'm using this information just for myself, my own comfort. I want to make sure the car's running right. Uh, and that's what started this whole process was I was like, yeah, I want to I really want to do a log on my car The temperatures are changing. I'm messing with boost a lot. I'm running different fuels uh, And I can with my handheld it's unlocked so I can go in and make quite a few changes, you know overall fuel um, I can change the overall spark I can change the spark in certain rpm ranges and same with the fuel so if I see something out of whack um, or I see that everything looks really good, I don't hear any knock, I can add a little bit of timing, or I can lower the timing and add boost. So um, there's, there's still quite a bit you can do if you know what you're doing. If you don't, please don't mess with those settings as you can destroy your motor like real quick. 
Okay guys, so as you can see, this is a lot of data here. You have uh, your time sequ sequence of when um, the data log. So just five seconds in has over 204, 200 points to be five seconds in. Um, and it tells you at the very top your column here, so analog one, um, this would be your air to fuel ratio and you can sometimes use that to find out when you go full throttle um, but the best way to go through this data and find out what's what for me anyways is I go over to let's see here throttle position and then whenever you see that start to rise um, that is whenever you started to go full throttle so here it is um, this is the start of the full throttle um, this is where I initially hit the gas right here so 1,419 data points in. I start the actual pool. Um, here's the RPMs. And let's just double check that. Yep, that's the RPMs there. So let's go back down to the 1400s. Um, this is where you can start checking data. So go down to where it's about uh, five, six, seven hundred. This is almost full throttle. And then the 900s is usually full throttle. I think 950 8, 9.57 is pretty much completely full throttle. Um, there's the RPMs there, right around 3,000. On the RPM gauge, it said 6,500. Did it actually go to 6,500? Uh, we shall see. So it looks like we stopped the run at 63.99, so 6,400 RPMs. And then you can see the throttle uh, closes right there. Okay, so here's my air to fuel, which is, I remember from the top looking, it's column C. 3,000 RPMs ish. So that's about perfect. Um, tip in at 12. Um, and then you have 11s, 11.5. Um, it does go pretty rich right here. <clears throat> but this car is also set up to run quite a bit more boost. So um, that's not bad to see it go that rich. Um, and then it kind of levels out here. Looks like it just kind of goes up and down. That's typical for a return less style fuel system because the fuel pump you know says go and then it says that's enough and then it says go and then that's enough so um, that's about what it should look like that's really good um, 11 ones that'll really control detonation and now let's look at timing so spark one um, so that's my timing so let's go back down to so 20.5 degrees of timing at um, right around 6000 rpms um, and that's really good so that's mainly what I'm looking at here with the data. With that much fuel, um, you can be a little aggressive on the timing just to get the power to come up a little. Um, 20 degrees is pretty aggressive. Um, I'm surprised to see it that aggressive. I expected 17, uh, but maybe since it's a turbo car, it's a little bit less than a supercharged setup, or it can handle a little more. Right around here is what I expected to see the whole way. Um, one more data point to look at, for me anyways, uh, what I'm really curious about is air intake temp. And my intercooler setup is really efficient, so I bet it's going to be really low. Then you can see when the run starts, it starts to climb pretty good. 78, 80, 90, 92, 96. Um, and then when I lift off the throttle, probably went up a little bit. Yeah, I got to 100 degree air intake temp. Um, which is not bad for a 70 degree day. Um, cruising around it looks like the air intake temp was actually the same as ambient temp outside so that's really good. But anyways that's a lot of information guys so um, these are all the different things at the top that you can um, that I actually logged. Um, so you got short term, um, your spark source where the sparks coming from and it changes when you go full throttle but my car's tuned different than probably most people's. Um, fuel pressure, uh, math counts, so you can see if your um, mass airflow sensor is ready to be like maxed out, air intake temp, um, injector pulse width, um, this is more of like an idle tune thing, uh, your fuel pump, and I think that is, yeah, duty cycle there, but uh, yeah, quite a bit of info there. So for a tuner, you can see they have a lot they look at, and they do lack, look at a lot more than this as well. Um, you can see if you have like an alternator problem going on here. You can see if your car's running hot, running too hot. My car has no thermostat in it uh, right now. 
And so I bet once I go full throttle, it actually goes cool. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the data while I'm doing this. So yeah, one got down to 158. Um, so that's great. A great way to control timing as well. All right, guys, so thanks for watching the video. Remember to click that subscribe button. I realize this is kind of a boring video, but it's more made to help people that are looking to data log their car, uh, people that might need a remote tune their car. So there's a lot of useful, useful information here, but um, for those people that don't need this information, hopefully you didn't watch this whole video. If you did, um, congrats. That's a really long video to watch for information you don't need. But um, yeah, hopefully you learned some stuff and I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure to check out all of my videos. Some of them are good, some of them suck, but um, all of them are made for you guys. So anyways, thanks for watching and goodbye. Okay guys, so I am on low boost, so don't judge the slowness of my Mustang.